Uh, I interviewed Father Walter Palczynski yesterday uh, just to reminisce, to talk about the, the beginnings, how he, be, how he began to pro propagate this mercy, divine mercy message. And then he escorted me to the grave of Father Joseph Unieski, who was the provincial at the time, and he was a superior. And he took me there, and we began to talk about the very beginnings of this devotion in our province. Father Walter, mm -hmm. Father Wunievski was a part of the beginning of our work in spreading the devotion to Divine Mercy. Could you tell us something about the very beginnings of our work in spreading this devotion? Yes, I'll be very happy to do this since I was involved from that very beginning when Father Joseph Jarzembowski brought the messages to the United States, um, escaping from Poland through Russia and the Pacific Ocean. He met uh, Father Sapochko in Vilno on his way, who handed him over these messages of Sister Faustina uh, that she received from our Lord. And he asked him, wherever you will find yourself, speak about these. Tell the people that our Lord is a merciful God. So when Father came to this country in, at the beginning of 1940, he immediately spoke to all of us clerics. I was a seminarian at the time. And he uh, encouraged us to, to spread this devotion. He himself preached a retreat for the Felician sisters soon after during the Lent. And this actually gave the beginning of uh, bringing this, these messages out to the, to the people. Since the Felician sisters printed a Novena booklet, uh, which uh, gave the messages in, in brief, and they asked the people who wrote to them to write to the Marian fathers uh, to tell them more about it. And at that time, if I'm to speak about my own involvement, I was asked by Father Joseph Donetsky, who was the superior at the time, to uh, help them in, in answering these uh, letters. After we came here to Stockbridge, where we're presently and where Father is buried, we organized uh, what we called at that time Mercy of God Apostolate, and uh, we have uh, started to print the Novena booklets and the image of Divine Mercy in many languages, in fact, in about 17 languages at the time. And uh, everything was accepted very well because we must be aware that uh, in those years uh, we were going through the Second World War and people were turning to our merciful Savior for his love and mercy, especially upon their sons and daughters in the service. and. Uh, uh, there are people behind the Iron Curtain. So we uh, had many, many requests for this literature. Father Walter, you know the war, war War II ended. And why the popularity after the war? Because as a matter of fact, we began to publish more and more in the late 40s and 50s than even during World War II. Yes, because the, the, the messages were very appealing. Uh, as you recall, that uh, one of the uh, message that our Lord gave to Sister Faustina was that uh, uh, tell ailing mankind that it will not find peace unless it turns trusting in, in my mercy. That was, these were the words of our Lord, and these were very appealing. And of course, we all know that we are sinners, we need God's mercy. So the uh, devotion was very appealing to people, and they were requesting continuously the literature. That is why we printed all of this literature. And it went far and wide, even beyond the, the uh, United States. We uh, even had some printed in the uh, Far East, in a couple of the languages there. Uh, well, of course, we know that in 1959, there was an official ban, which was made by the Holy See, and we could not continue with the publication, with the spreading of the devotion, as it was given by Sister Faustina. And I know that the Marians, of course, discontinued to propagate in that version, but have continued to spread it in a different form. 
Yes, we continue to spread the devotion to our merciful Savior, but we based it only on the scriptures and the teachings of the Church. Uh, we, agree, we follow the instructions received by the Bishop of the Springfield Diocese, and we were very faithful to all of this. And I believe that our Lord blessed our efforts because we had so much, many funds tied in the literature and the images of our Divine Lord that if we did not get the help and the support from people, uh, we possibly would have to file a bankruptcy, the way it looked. That was uh, one of the signs that we were doing God's work because at the end of that year, uh, we actually, our funds even tripled uh, at that time. So God has really blessed our efforts. And I, I never doubt it, actually. So when the... Yes. Now, of course, we know also that in 1978, the ban was lifted by Pope Paul VI, and there's a great a new impetus in spreading the Divine Mercy message from this center, uh, which right now is continuing. Yes, it, it was uh, uh, re started again on a, on a very large scale, and uh, what has convinced me all the time that it is of divine origin uh, that the Holy Father, when he was the Cardinal in Krakow, has uh, immediately uh, organized the inf informative process of Sister Faustina's life to prepare for her beatification. And uh, then when her cause was accepted by Rome, uh, the Polish hierarchy, as I recall, continuously approached the Holy Father to remove the decree because they couldn't speak much about Sister Faustina. Yes, well, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Father Walter. Thank you very much You're for, very for these words. Yes.